Hi, Beach Baby Bob here. Today I want to talk to you about books. Books specifically for little kids. And I've got a box full of books right here, see? Yep, and they're all picture books. And most of them are story picture books, which means that they're fiction. That means they're not true. They're stories. They have a beginning, middle, and end. And where did I get these books? I got them at the thrift store. The thrift store is like a junk store. And people are throwing away everything these days, especially books. And every thrift store I've ever been in for the last 20 years has shelves filled with books, especially books for kids. And some of those books are better than others. Some of the stories are wonderful and others aren't so hot. Anyway, um, recently I was with my wife and we were in Rwanda, East Africa, uh, checking out the mountain gorillas. And as you know, there's only about 800 left on the planet and they live in the mountains in Rwanda. So we went there, we wanted to experience the mountain gorillas before they're all gone. And while we were there, we met a young lady. She was one of our guides. She took us up the mountain looking for the gorillas one day. And she told me that she um, wanted to open up a library and she wanted to teach the kids, the little kids in her village, how to speak English. But she was having trouble finding some books that were written in English. And I thought, well, you, you've, you're asking the right people because my wife and I were both teachers and we used picture books our whole life to make the kids that we worked with smarter because we knew that a great picture book with a great beginning, a great middle and a great end with lots and lots of interesting characters and lots of conflicts and lots of resolutions would challenge the brain of our students and they would ultimately become smarter humans. So we used a lot of picture books. So we said to this uh, young lady in Africa, you know, when we get back to Canada, we're going to go to the thrift stores. We're going to collect picture books because, you know, they're practically giving them away. And we're going to ship them back to you so you can start your own library. So this is just one of the many boxes that I brought home the other day. And before I decide to ship them to Africa, I have to check them out. Now remember, I was a teacher and I worked with um, picture books, story books for kids for over 30 years. So did my wife. So the two of us usually check out the books really quickly and then we, um, when we're in the thrift stores, and then we bring them home in hopes that we we're bringing home great books. But sometimes we have to scrutinize the books a little closer to make sure that they're worthy of the kids around the world, including the kids in Africa that want to learn how to speak English. And this particular box I've got here just so happens to have an Eric Carle book in it called The Very Quiet Cricket. And you know, when I was a teacher, I used this book not only with the five-year-olds, the kindergartens in the school, but also with the 13, 14-year-olds, the grade eight kids in the school. It's got a great beginning, a great middle, and a great end. And it even has You hear that cricket sound? It even has a computer chip inside it. That's why the last page is extra thick. So anyway, not only is the book a terrific book, but the kids, when they hear the cricket sound at the end, they want to take that book home. And um, I don't blame them. It's a great story. The Very Quiet Cricket by Eric Carle. By the way, that book cost me, I think it was 25 cents. If you went to a bookstore to buy that book, it might be $25. Anything by Eric Carle is worth your collection. Anything. So that's one book that was in this box. And then I was flipping through it and I found a Harry the Dirty Dog book in the box by Gene Zion. Yeah, any Harry book, because Gene wrote all kinds of Harry books Harry the Dirty Dog book, Harry books. And uh, they're all wonderful. Again, they all have a great beginning, a great middle, and a great end. This is called Harry the Dirty Dog, and it goes like this. Harry was a white dog with black spots who liked everything except getting a bath. So one day, when he heard the water running in the tub, he took the scrubbing brush 
and buried it in the backyard. And then he ran away from home. Well, the story even gets more and more exciting. The kids love this book, and on the back, in the little red label here, it says 50 cents. I couldn't resist. I thought, my goodness, it's a Gene Zion written book, and the pictures are by, by Margaret Ploy Graham, and I got all the Harry books in my own collection from years gone by, and you should too. So there's two books right off the bat I couldn't resist. And then, wouldn't you know it, I hit the jackpot that day when I was up at the thrift store because I found Susan Madow's book called Tree of Birds. And yes, I love birds and I love trees. And this is a great story. I'm going to show you the last page of the story. And the book says, Oh, Mom, said Harry. That's the last page. I don't know if you can see it, but I hope you can. Yep. And the first page, first beginning part of the story is when Harry goes out into his backyard and he finds that there's lots of birds in the backyard tree. And then on his way to school, as he's scratching his head, wondering why there's so many birds, he finds a bird on the road that was hit by a car and he decides to take it home and bring it back to good health. So you've seen the last page, you started the, seen the first page of the book, and it just is one of my favorite all-time stories. Susan Madow, Tree of Birds. I'll show you a couple more here. Oh, well, the carrot seed. It says on here, 60th anniversary. This is a very, very thin, very very short story but i'm going to read the whole thing to you and just pay attention to the beginning the beginning is when you find out where it takes place what the theme is and who the characters are and then the story starts to get exciting when you get to the first problem so i'll just sort of stop and stare at you when i get to the first problem but this is a very short book a little boy planted a carrot seed his mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. His father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. Now let's go back again. It says here, right on the very first page, a little boy planted a carrot seed. So, you know, there's a little boy in this story. You know, it's about planting a carrot seed, probably in the backyard or in the garden somewhere. Well, where's the problem? No problem. Until his mother said, I'm afraid it won't come up. And his father said, I'm afraid it won't come up. And then, let's see what happens. Well, the pages are stuck together. And his big brother said, it won't come up. Every day the little boy pulled up the weeds around the seed and he sprinkled the ground with water. Nothing came up. And nothing came up. Not too many words in this book, right? But a great story so far. It's getting more exciting as we go along. Everyone kept saying, it won't come up. But he still pulled up the weeds around it every day and sprinkled the ground with water. He was determined, determined to have success. And then one day, this book's been in the thrift store too long. The pages are smelling a little bit stale. A carrot came up. I don't know if you tried to plant a carrot seed and have it grow. I planted one uh, in my garden, a carrot seed, in the dirt um, around May after the frost had gone away. And just, you know, the at last week, the carrot started to get bigger and I could see the orange, reddish, orange part. Just as the little boy had known it would.
the end. Great book. Simple. Been around for 60 years. The Carrot Seed. Ruth Krause. Get that one too. Well, sometimes I come across books like this one here. It's a big one. It's called Baby Farm Animals. But Baby Farm Animals is probably a book about baby farm animals. It's probably not even a story. And then it starts off with baby cats are called kittens. They love to play on the farm. And at night, the farmer gives them fresh cow's milk and they curl up together in the big red barn. So far, could be a story. And then it starts with baby rabbits and baby guinea pigs and goes on like that with baby animals, even baby donkeys. Great book, great pictures, not much information, but enough just to learn a little bit. And I'd probably send that one to Africa too. Even though it's not a storybook, it's a non-fiction book, which means it's true. Remember, storybooks are fiction. Fiction means made up, not true. Well, I'll try one more here. This one, I say a little prayer for you sounds like the name of a song. Well, it says down here, original song by Bert Bacharach and Hal David. I say a little prayer for you. I wonder if it's a story. It's a nice big book. Yeah, the pictures are pretty nice. Not too much going on there, but nicely done. Happy birthday. Take a moment. I'll wake up before I put on my makeup. I say a little prayer for you. Looks like this is going to be a birthday for this person here who is still sleeping and there's the mother with the presents. Is it a story? Well, combing my hair and wondering what to dress and wear, I say a little prayer for you. I think it's a storybook. Forever, forever, you'll stay in my heart and I will love you forever and ever. You will never, we will never part and oh, how I will love you. You know what? Not bad. I like the pictures. Simple. Off they go. The day's begun. I don't know if there's a problem yet. Not too complicated. I don't know about taking that one and sending it off to Africa. But you know, it doesn't have too many words. The kids in Africa are just trying to learn how to speak English properly. And I think I might just send it. But I like the more complicated ones. Even the carrot seed is more complicated than this one. But you never know. I, I think I'd keep this one too. Maybe that's why my wife picked it off the shelf and brought it home. So anyway, that's pretty good. Oh, one more. Tiki Tiki Tembo. No saw Rembo. Chari Bari Ruchi. P Perry Pembo is the name of the main character in this book. And he and his brother would go down to the well while his mother did the laundry and while the old man slept under the tree. And they would play beside the well, around the well, and on the well. And you know, it was dangerous. So you know probably what would happen when the two little boys were playing near the well. This book is just, it says on the back, the New York Times, which is a magazine in uh, New York, reviews books like this and other books, and they say it's fabulous. And the Horn Book, which is another periodical or magazine, it reviews books too, not only kids' books, but um, books for adults. And it says, it's an old folk tale and it's delightful. And when those two place, um, book companies, the New York Times and the Horn Books, say something's good, it's good. Well, I know this is good because I've read it a million times to kids and they loved it, every bit of it. Remember, Tiki Tiki Tembo is the title. So I would keep that one for sure and um well this is going to africa for sure but i have my own copy of that one i would never part with that book so anyway that's how we do this we collect books for um that lady in in rwanda up at um the village up in um what's it called sue it's called um volcanoes national park yeah right volcanoes national park is the park where the gorillas are in the mountains and there's a village there and the ladies getting these books. So I hope you read books. I hope you collect books. They're, to me, uh, better than watching the movie on YouTube. But if you uh, must watch the movie on YouTube, uh, you can look for um, my uh, Storytime for Kids YouTube channel um, and um, check out Tiki Tiki Tembo and the Carrot Seed and some of these other ones. And that's almost as good as having the real book, but 
go to a thrift store, look for these books, check my channel out to find out which ones you should get. I've got over 150 recommendations on there. And get your own collection of books for kids. And not only read them to the little people in your family, but read them to the older people in your family too, because old people need to keep their brains working up to par as they age. And uh, over and out. See you next